Okay, the modern periodic table. This will get you guys set up for your project tomorrow where you're going to diagram your own periodic table. Here's This is the modern one. This is not going to be Mosley, Mendeleev, Meyer, Newlands. This is what we have today, which you guys have been referring to during your tests. This big one I have behind me, known as the modern periodic table. Let's understand how it's put together, what is where, what sections are called what, what rows are called, what columns are called, what sections are called, and so on. The modern periodic table consists, consists of boxes, each containing an element name, symbol, atomic number and atomic mass. Now, every periodic table is different. If you were to go to Google images and type in periodic table, you're gonna get a lot of different versions of what's generally the same thing. Some might be including a name of the element, some might not. You see the giant one behind me has everything I just said. It also has the uh, electron configuration in there. It has a lot of information. So let's just uh, identify what one of these boxes looks like and what's actually actually inside the box, okay? So the first thing is you might have the name of the element, in this case, oxygen. You'll then have its atomic number. Oxygen's atomic number is eight. Here's a unit one question for you all. What does the atomic number represent? The number of protons. You'll then have the element symbol, which is a one or two letter symbol. Remember that capital matters. I texted one of you, I'm not gonna say who, you know who you are, where you were supposed to write neon like this and you didn't do that, you did this. I can't stress enough. You have to capitalize when appropriate. You have to lowercase when appropriate. And then on the bottom, you have the mass number. Now, on some periodic tables, the state of matter at room temperature, which is typically like around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, is going to be indicated on the diagram. If you look on the giant periodic table behind me, Everything that is in red letters is a gas at room temperature. Everything that's black uh, letters is made of black letters is going to be solid at room temperature. The two that are blue are liquid at room temperature, mercury and bromine. And all the white lettered ones are man-made. They're not found in nature. They're called synthetic elements. As recently as when I was in high school, 20 years ago, this bottom row was pretty much empty. If you all looked at the periodic tables that you've that you have tucked in your textbooks, the bottom row is half empty. Those periodic tables you have at your tables are old because those elements weren't found yet. But now it's 2023, they have been found. I think these last four were created in 2014 or so. Yeah. And they want to be like solid with gas. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them we use all the time, like um where is it? Number 95. Americium is used in smoke detectors. If you have a smoke detector in your house, you have that in your house. Plutonium is used in atomic energy and atomic weapons. Um, we watched the scene from Iron Man where he synthesized a new element to power his chest piece without killing him. <clears throat> now, in the modern periodic table, how are elements organized based on what we did yesterday? Are they organized by increasing mass number or atomic number? Yes. You were going to say something? Yeah. What's the point of that? I mean, For electron configurations. That's the point. So you know how many valence electrons they have. And the valence determines if the element is stable or not. We're going to be doing that throughout the year. Yeah. All right, 
The boxes are arranged by increasing atomic number. Now, here's some uh, terms for you. If you studied your vocab, these terms are nothing new. On the periodic table, a column is called a group. So, uh, Nella, how many groups are there in the periodic table? There are 18. A row is called a um, period. Helen, how many rows are there, AKA periods? So there are seven. Now, if you're wondering about these two down here, ones I'm pointing to, they fit in the seventh and the sixth row. Okay, next, and you guys had your vocab quiz just yesterday, so you might remember what you put for some of these. Representative elements. Oops. These are groups. When I say groups, is that a row or a column? Or sorry, a row, or, yeah, a row or a column. It's a column. These are groups, one through two, 13 through 18. So let's see if you guys know some stuff from last unit. What blocks are those? S and P, S block and the P block. Then we have transition elements. These are going to be groups three through 12. So what block is that? That's the D block, the metals. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, elements are classified as being metals, non-metals, or metalloids. First one here is a metal. Here are some of the characteristics of metals, which is the majority of the periodic table. The majority of it is metals. They're shiny, smooth, clean, solid at room temp. What's the one exception, do you know? Mercury. Mercury is liquid metal at room temperature. If you if you freeze it, it will harden. There are no metals that are a gas at room temp, which now leads me to give you all a little bit of a PSA, public service announcement, on vaping. If you do that, what you are doing is you are heating oil and metal into a vapor, which then goes into your lungs. It then condenses back into a liquid and a solid, and a lot of it stays in your lungs. And I know you all likely don't know too much about the human body yet, but I can assure you that you are not supposed to have liquid and solid metal in your lungs. 
So it took us about 40 or 50 years to figure out the health effects of cigarettes. This past year, or this past weekend, the Bucks had their throwback game where they wore their old uniforms. And during the week when they were building up all the fans for this really fun looking game, they were showing old footage of their old stadium before Raymond James Stadium when they played in what they called Tampa Stadium. And I noticed that on the old footage from the 70s and 80s, they had these giant billboards for cigarettes, Marlboro, Joe Camel, all this, all these cigarettes. You don't see that now. Because back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s even, people smoked all the time. But we were learning what it does to the body. It took us decades to figure it out. Decades. And once we figured it out, we were shocked with just how bad cigarettes are for the body. And so there was laws passed where you cannot advertise for it. You will, if all y'all on social media, you see ads all the time. You don't see ads for cigarettes. You're not allowed to do it. There's no billboards for cigarettes anymore. There's no commercials for cigarettes anymore. There's no advertising for cigarettes anymore. You can't do it in this country. But vaping is different. And so what I'm telling you now is that we are uh, now into our understanding of vaping where we were probably in the 60s where we were with our understanding of smoking. We were learning and there was a lot to figure out. And only now are we starting to figure out exactly what it does to the human body. Now I don't know about you, but I know I would not want to be a guinea pig for the medical history books to learn exactly what it did. Because I can assure you, playing high school is almost 100 years old. I can assure you, the nurse back in the day, decades ago, the nurse probably smoked in the clinic. The principal probably smoked in his office. The media center specialist likely smoked in the media center. The teachers probably smoked in the teacher's lounge. You could smoke on airplanes. You could smoke in hospitals. If y'all ever watch Stranger Things, which takes place in the 80s, what are they always doing? Smoking. That's what everyone did. And now we figured out, ugh, that stuff's bad. My parents are in their 70s, and it's, man, they, ugh, it's rough. Because what they smoked their almost their whole adult life. So what I'm telling you now is metals, back to this lesson, metals are supposed to be solid, except for mercury. Mercury is that one weirdo. When you superheat that stuff in a vape pen or something, it becomes a, a vapor, a gas, <gasps> goes in your lungs. It's no longer being superheated. So it goes back to being a liquid, goes back to being a solid, and it stays there. Little by little, it starts to fill up. There have been 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds that have had to have lung transplants. They've had to be induced into coma, a medically induced coma, because their lungs were failing because they vape so much. They started in middle school. And by the time you get to high school, 16, 17 years old, it's bad. So if you do this, I would strongly encourage you to stop. Because if you go to a doctor and you ask them, what does vaping do to the body? They're going to say, we don't know for sure. Because we're in the infancy stage of learning what it does. If you ask them what a cigarette do, oh, we know what it does. It took us like 70 years to figure it out, but we figured it out. We are in the learning stage of vaping now. So I'm going to encourage all of you not to do that. Okay. I had to get that out of my system. Hope you all heed my warning. <clears throat> Back to this. Metals. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. When I was in elementary school, uh, we had, and I know y'all may have seen a meme of this. I'll see if I can look it up later. I'll look it up later. Where there was this slide on the playground. And you know, nowadays, all slides are plastic. That wasn't always the case. There was this one slide. It just looked, it was like a traditional little slide. You climb up the ladder like this, da -da 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 -da, and you slide down. It was straight up metal. How do you think that thing felt after cooking in the sun all day in Florida? It was a slide of death. <laughs> you would have kids getting like second degree burns on their butt and their thighs from sliding down this thing. And it was not slick like plastic is. You go, <laughs> just their body trying to, we wouldn't even have to, we'd have to do this on the way down the slide because you get stuck. It was so hot and dry and uh, not smooth. So we learned our lessons. Now, that's another example of how the past helped us learn our lessons to apply to the present. Um, metals are malleable 
and ductile. No, I can only speak for myself. I remember learning what these were in middle school. Do you guys know what malleable means? Anyone? Varun? Ugh, you're on the right track. Malleable means it can be pounded into a sheet. Anyone know what ductile means? It can be bent into wire. Um, let me show you all something. Great talk. <clears throat> this will be a really easy demonstration, okay? Really easy demonstration. Hold on. Let's see if I got one. Yes, okay. All right. Fork. Does this look like a metal or non-metal to you, Kellen? Is it bendable? Yeah. How about this? Um, These cannot be bent. This is a non-metal. This is carbon, by the way. This, my wife's going to be mad at me. I'll have to fix that later. That is metal. So kind of give you an idea of what's... Uh, what the chemical properties are. Metals can be bent, they can be twisted, they can be pounded into a sheet. Non-metals really can't. All right, let's see what else we got. Most representative elements are metals. So, everybody? Group one is everything is a metal except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is the outcast. Group two, everything is metal. Group 13, everything but boron. Group 14, uh, half of them, SN, lead, fluorovium is synthetic. But the majority, more than 50% of the S and P blocks, which are the representative elements, are metals. Let's go to uh, continue with the metals. Alkali metals. These are the group one elements, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is a non-metal. Let's see what you guys recall from last unit. How many valence electrons does everything in group one have? One, one valence. Are they stable by themselves? No, they are not. They are highly reactive because they only have one valence electron. Try to fix this fork. Ooh, boy, I'm gonna break it. So. Wait, Kelly, I think she'll notice. I think it's okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Next is going to be the alkaline earth metals. These are all group two elements, and that would include beryllium, magnesium, calcium, uh, strontium, barium, and radium. How many valence electrons do all the elements in group two have? The alkaline earth metals. They have two valence electrons. Okay. Next, I'd like to discuss transition and inner transition metals.
Transition metals are easy. It's the D block. These are going to be groups three through 12. Inner transition metals compose the F block. Now, this is where it would be in your best interest, everybody, to open up a periodic table so you may see what I'm talking about. There's two new terms. If you didn't get these on the bulkhead quiz, you will see them on your test. So if you didn't get them the first time, get them this time. The F block is made up of two rows. You see them right here. The top row is named after the first element. Lanthanum, so the, this... Front, this top row is called the lanthanides. They're the top row of the F block. The bottom row of the F block is named after the first element in the F block, and it's called actinium. We call this the actinides. All of these are called the actinides. So in the inner transition metals, you have the lanthanides. And the actinides. Lanthanides are the top row of the F block. Actinides are the bottom row of the F block. We got about seven minutes. We should be good. I thought we we're going to do a little drawing today. We'll have to save it for tomorrow when we actually do our project. Nonmetals. This is mostly the P block. The only nonmetal that is not in the P block is hydrogen. Hydrogen is over in the S block. These are mostly. Gases. There are some solids. There is one liquid. What's the one liquid non-metal? Bromine. Bro There's only one liquid metal, one liquid non-metal. That's it. But for the solids, solid non-metals are brittle, dull, Four conductors of heat and electricity. Let me ask you all this. You use your pencil lead and it snaps under you. And you're like, ah, oh, crap. You got to push your pencil and get more lead out. Would you say your pencil lead is a metal or a non-metal? It's a non-metal. It's, it's carbon. Carbon is a non-metal. Um, bromine. Is the only liquid at room temp. If you freeze bromine, it will become a solid. But at room temperature, which is about 74, 75 degrees, it's going to be a liquid. Group 17 is called the halogens. That would be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. Do you remember what group 18 is called? We did that for last unit. Yep. Group 18 is called the noble gases. Now, here's another question from unit uh, four, one you just finished last week. What is unique about the noble gases that no other elements have? Do you remember, Connor? They're stable as they are. 
they're very unreactive because they're they're stable. They're stable by themselves. They're like eternally single. They don't bond, they don't have to bond to anything because they're stable as they are. All right. So um there's one more type. We got metals, we got non-metals. The last thing I need to teach you, and we'll be done for today, are metalloids. They're also known as, aka, semi-metals. <clears throat> they have chemical and physical properties of metals and non-metals and there's not a lot of them so i think it's in your best interest to write these down there's only seven and they kind of make a staircase pattern look at me they're like this one two three four five six seven i'll do that again one write down boron b for boron si for silicone that's two ge germanium Named after Germany. Arsenic, something found in cigarettes, toxic. Antimony, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, is it tellurium one? Yep, tellurium is one. TE, tellurium. And lastly, polonium. So to recap, boron, silicone, germanium, arsenic, Antimony, tellurium, polonium. Boron, silicone, germanium, arsenic, antimony, <clears throat> tellurium, polonium. That's it. Those are the only non-metals on the whole table. <clears throat> all right. That's all, guys. Perfect timing. I've given you 